Holding doesn't work. Just have to go flying that way.
Thank you. Thank you. So earlier, right before this ride, I was riding my OG Sherman version 3 at 28 PSI. And I haven't ridden that for maybe a couple weeks since I got the Sherman S, this one right here. And man, you really have to acclimate to different wheels. Like it felt at first, like so, so sketchy, so wobbly, so much vibration. And a lot of tram lining and train tracking, both of them. So tram lining is when it gets sucked into a groove and then train tracking is like when you have like a camber and then it follows the camber angle 
Uh, once I loosen up my death grip on the wheel, then it helped a little bit. Yeah, you can feel every little bump. You really had to bend your knees with the non-suspension OG Sherman. Uh, this is like, I find I'm carving more. And uh, there's no pedal dip on this as well. So when I was practicing my figure eights, there's a lot of pedal dip on the OG Sherman. This has none. And what's that for those people? Usually you don't have anyone else going through here at nighttime. Let's do turbo mode. That's another bike. But yeah, the main difference with this is uh, you're higher up. Starting from a stop is not as easy. Seated riding is not as easy. It's very smooth. Um, but the response isn't instant. Like it's like slightly, very slightly delayed because of the suspension. It just feels like the extra weight. Like this, you really have to manhandle it, I find. You really have to push it. And also leaning over to turn. It's a much higher turn. But you're, you're a lot higher, so you have to lean over more so you feel like you're falling. So my turns aren't as good as in this one. Low speed turns. Surprising with the cold weather, there's a lot of gnats still, a lot of flies. So this portion here, see all these little mini bumps? It was pretty bumpy on the OG Sherman. You can still feel it here, but not as much. And also right away on the OG Sherman, look at the first loop, my feet were hurting. Then you get used to it. So here is one of the turns. It's a tighter turn. So you gotta like turn and then trust it. Lean into it. I find with this too, I'm also zigzagging and like carving at low speed too. Just to keep extra stability, like you're on a tightrope. Yeah, there's a lot of flies, even though it's cold. It's quite interesting. So I have turbo mode on my helmet. There we go. And my Sherman S headlight, which is a bit better than the OG Sherman. OG Sherman's like a single lightsaber in the middle, like a very spot throw light. This is like a throw light and partial flood as well. Yeah, all the little like imperfections just kind of melt away with the Sherman on this uh, suspension on the Sherman S. And it, it entices you to go faster because it's so smooth. It's like a Cadillac. Sure, um, suspension is the way to go. It's like night and day. And the um, the Kenda stock tire in the OG Sherman, so loud the tire roar. It's nice, like killer bees. Um, I think it's the the tread. It's. Um, the sidewalls are harder and the rubber is harder. Uh, this Sherman S also had a Kenda as well, previously Nobby, but um, it was replaced by the CST equivalent. And this CST equivalent is so much more quiet and soft and pliable. I'm running at 30 PSI and it doesn't feel like 30, it feels much softer. It's much more cushy, uh, more comfortable, less, a lot less tram lining. 
The other Sherman, it tram lines like crazy. This one, I barely get any tram lining. And train tracking as well. Very little. I don't know if it's the suspension geometry in combination with a different tire, even though they're both knobbies. It's just so effortless. You're just like flying through here in the forest. Both Shermans were in medium mode. Uh, pedal angle at zero. Okay, my feet are starting to hurt on this one because I'm not as comfortable just with the pedal height. So I'm curling my toes a little bit and gripping onto the bottom of the wheel when I should be. Uh, and right now I kind of feel a little bit of pain in my knees a bit. Because I did about 14k on the OG Sherman. This is maybe about the first 6 or 7k of this one. So what I like to do is I do an outer loop and then an inner loop. Inner loop, so outer loop, inner loop, and then our um, outer, inner, outer. Because the outer loop, when you first get on, you're a little wobbly. The inner loop kind of gets you all accustomed to bumps and whatnot, and then it makes it easier when you back when you transition back to the outer loop again, because you're not dealing with all these bumps and everything. Right. So this kind of loosens you up a bit, even though you're tensing your legs. It makes the outside loop so much easier. Because <laughs> you're really carving and bracing and having a lot of bumps and whatnot. And when you get to the outer loop, it's all smooth sailing.
Mm, six, so I'm not going very fast. You know, you're just feeling out the wheel. Because, you know, it's not as easy just to jump between wheels. There's all these nuances. Height, angles, pedal feel. When this rolls into the turns, you feel like you're going to fall off the side. So that's why, like, carving is kind of like you're doing, like, a balancing act. It's kind of like doing a little shimmy, you know, when you're on a tightrope. That's what carving kind of feel like. Kind of feels like you're you're choosing the axis of balance, not letting the UC dictate which way you're gonna lean. Only thing you gotta be careful here. This is a rubber surface, which is great if you fall but it also gets like black ice faster than normal um, asphalt over there. Hang up a chili. Here's one time I wiped out on my OG Sherman because I was too occupied with looking at my foot placement. So I looked down. Before I knew it, I was already on the ridge there and I just bailed onto my shoulder. I think I like bruised or slightly fractured my collarbone, but I didn't go to the hospital. So now my collarbone, it's, it's a slight bend there. Like when you look at it in the mirror, it's like a slight, it looks like a bone is like slightly askew, slightly bulging out. I should have went to the hospital and checked the do got the doctor to put me in a cast or whatnot, so it would heal in a proper alignment. But um, my shoulder hasn't been the same. That was maybe in December uh, when I fell. I rolled and I didn't have any armor yet. Uh, I hit my shoulder on the grass and like hit my right shoulder and and uh, flipped onto my back. Um, and then the next day, I couldn't even lift up my hand above my head. It took maybe three or four days before I could do that. And then I couldn't put any weight on it either. It took me like two weeks to do that. Then it felt okay, but still, you know, when you go to the gym, it doesn't feel quite right. I can't put as much weight on it. I was back in December. It's already uh, September, so it's at least six or seven months, right? I didn't see any physio, which I should have. I thought I just maybe got a bruise or something, but no, I had, or a, hit a muscle. I think I did some permanent damage to my shoulder there. That's the thing, never look down, especially when you were learning and whatnot. Don't look at your feet, don't look at your pedal placement. Just get on and see how it feels. It'll either feel right or feel off. Don't be concerned with looking down to see if your feet are aligned exactly front and back equidistant because some people do asymmetrical stance no one is exactly symmetrical at all times so earlier I was bobbing and weaving all over the place here because I was on the OG Sherman this is the only good spot where you can take a quick picture 
yourself because there's actual lighting. Maybe he can hit the trigger there, and I don't have to, like, stop. <laughs> no, he is not going to press the trigger. That looked like another EUC, like a V10 or a V8. I don't know where that guy went, that scooter guy just disappeared. Ooh, my legs. So sore. Oh, I should rest first. See, mounting is no problem, as long as I don't have people staring at me. I hate that. That just staring, it, it adds pressure. Broken glass here. Keep carving. Always be carving. A, B, C. If you zombie ride, that's when the wheel dictates which way you're going to lean. It's weird because when you zombie ride, you're just like at a tightrope and then any little thing will knock you off the center balance. It's very disorienting. Unnerving, I should say, not disorienting. So if you're nervous and you're clamping the wheel and you're zombie riding, it'll 
wheel will turn like this, and then you'll be clamped on, so you're going to follow it too. Now, what's this guy doing? Is he going to slow down? Yes, yeah, good. Dead rats. 